got a surprise today. We're going to take a look at how we've been mapping Zim onto 3JS. Uh, let's have a look. Oh my goodness. Look at that. So this is a, a Zim on a 3JS panel and we can operate it. Wow. Oh yeah. <laughs> Isn't that cool? So let's take a look at the code. F11. We're bringing in a new version of CreateJS, which has some of this, it won't be called that, but it'll just be probably 1.3.5. And then a new version of Zim as well, 0.15. So this is in the upcoming versions. We're bringing in some 3JS and Orbit controls and our Zim 3, which we've just patched. There wasn't too much in it, so we've just patched that. That won't update. And eventually you'd be able to import that uh, just a Zim 3, if you so desire. And you don't have to use our versions here through the import. Uh, all this will work too if you're just bringing in Zim and your versions of 3JS. That should work fine too. So we're coming in. Uh, Zim is a JavaScript Canvas framework and it has lots of components and conveniences and controls. As far as we can tell, most of that, there's only been one or two things that... Um, that we need to take a look at and we still will but most of that seems to work just fine mapped onto a canvas texture so that's what we're doing we're taking zim which is this stuff and then in 3js down here we are basically using the three canvas texture to map what we've got going on so that's what we're going to take a look at and uh, then it's on there so it doesn't have to be just a menu system like this uh, we started off just experimenting with some animation so we got animated texture and that was exciting to see it doesn't have to be on a panel like this or a plane it can be around a sphere so or a sphere well maybe not a sphere is okay i guess but around a cylinder or something or on a box uh, so we or on a model so we're going to be rolling out a series of examples and not only that but it doesn't only have to operate on zim so when i spin i could have spun a 3js object uh, we've already been doing that we've been using zim to control 3js and we have all sorts of ways to uh, change colors on stuff and change sizes etc so now what we've done though is we've taken zim instead of being on the 2d plane we've moved zim into the 3d world and used ray casting and then mapped those ray casted values on the texture uh, right into CreateJS. so right at the very root of CreateJS, which means everything that zim uses in terms of the CreateJS events are are mapped and it works <laughs> it's actually uh, quite amazing, quite brilliant. So um, there were some tricks to do that, and that's what we're going to take a look at in this under the hood. So let's move on over. Uh, we will have more mm, sort of more accessible videos about uh, how to use Zim and 3JS coming up when we launch. This video is more, hey, we're in the middle of making this. Let's show you how we're doing it and capture the moment. Uh, I think this is pretty momentous. I've been wanting to do this for some time. Um, I've been in virtual reality a lot and seen lots of menus there and said, oh my goodness, it would be nice if we could get Zim in there as an interface for that. Uh, one thing I forgot to show you here is we're interacting with that. If we pull back, now I can't interact with it. So it's got a near far as well, and that works. And another thing that it has is it uh, it will raycast, depending on how you want it, it will raycast layers. So if you pass in a layer one and you put all your menus on layer one, it won't raycast anything else that you've got in there. It will only raycast on layer one. So I know that that's handy too. I've been working in VR for a while with um, Unity and Blender and so forth and bringing in worlds into Altspace VR and building in Altspace VR, etc. cetera. Um, so I've, I've been using a lot of these menus. And uh, another thing I haven't shown you here is if we take a text input, um, we can 
put input text here too and it all works just just uh, really well the only thing on that one is when i select the the input uh we were using pointer events that weren't through create.js and those haven't we'll have to put those back through create.js so that um, those work but anyway it works with uh, arrow keys and typing and stuff um, so it's, it's already working well enough but it would be nice if we could just sort of swipe select the text and that's that was missing there's something else too that was like that that oh yes our uh, our pointer events on the frame no yeah that's right we we just introduced pointer events in the frame and with that um, comes the advantage that we can press up outside of the canvas. We could never capture that before, but we can with pointer events. So we were using that in our new um, cursors. So we have custom cursors and the latest version is in, we launched custom cursors and those custom cursors all use raw pointer events, not through three uh, create Jess. So the custom, uh, custom cursors don't, don't work on here. But like I said, that was the couple things that we found that weren't working and we know why. So it just means going back and sort of retrofitting some of that. But the, the rest of the stuff, which is like 99.9999% of the things, tons of things in Zim. We've got emitters and we've tried emitters working on this. And it's just like, wow, every, everything works. Everything looks great. So there could be a couple more as we go through, but from whatever we've tested, um, the performance seems really good and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Okay, back into the code. Uh, let's pop on in here. And we had sort of jumped down in there to just give you an overview, but we're bringing in our files. Um, we have a Zim frame, so it may be that you're coming in to these videos without really knowing too much about Zim because it's the 3JS combination, and that's wonderful. I, I absolutely welcome anybody coming in from 3JS. We are quite similar. 3JS is a wonderful, simple 3D uh, canvas framework. Um, Zim is a 2D canvas framework, but we are very simple as well, and I think you'll find that we do things um, very similarly. Uh, which is nice, as opposed to, say, going out to Box2D where you're going, oh my god, you know, what is all this stuff? <laughs> it's a little bit older, a little bit put together by engineers, but Mr. Doob and, the, the, and so forth on the, on the three side have done a very nice job at keeping things nice and tidy, which is good. All right, so here we are in Zim. We're making a frame, and this will, to some degree, affect what you're doing. If we um, put a bunch of stuff on the stage, <clears throat> that's what we have. We have a stage in a sense. Um, and if you put a bunch of stuff on the stage, that's like a scene in 3JS, then uh, that these are the dimensions that you're sort of using as you're building uh, with that. So we're in here and what we've done is to prepare to pre prepare us to add things to Zim and then show them in 3JS. We've made a new class called a texture active and that's what we're calling it and really it extends as we can see here there's a bunch of stuff in here we haven't moved it into zim yet so this is the under the hood aspect is we don't really build in zim when we're building something new we just put it right in the file where we're building it's much easier to kind of manage then when we've got it our classes to the state that we want then we put them into zim and and sort of map them all up properly there so this is the stuff. There's not really much in this class because in a sense, it's a wrapper class for the Zim page. And there's not much in a Zim page either. It's a wrapper class for a Zim container. So can, uh, we, uh, we have these things called pages in Zim and we can swipe between pages. And for years, people ask us, well, how do you make a page? And, and we constantly have to be saying, put your content in a container and that's your page. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually we gave up and in Zimcat we just made um, a page class and the page class was really just a container that had a background color. So we decided to, there's a few things that we want to add. Uh, for instance, whether it's going to be interactive, whether it's going to be animated. 
and those were, I mean, we could say make a page or make a container and then add these properties, but it would have been nice. It's, it's nice to sort of guide people using a class. So, and in doing so, it frees us up in a few different ways as well. Everything that we're doing in Zim needs to be cached so that we can map the, the cached canvas onto 3JS. And normally we don't have to do that. So um, in, in the system we've got here, we're kind of going to do it for you automatically based on whether you've got a texture active or not. So these eventually, these texture actives, after we work with Zim, that was working with Zim, we are going to pass in any of those things we make. Uh, that will be an array of things we make into there. So there we are passing in the menu and the backing. And then this prepares those things, uh, those texture actives, for uh, mapping onto the 3JS um, uh, textures. Okay, so that's the general idea. In other words, we've got a new class up here, but there's not really too much to it. It's just um, extending a page, a Zim page cl class, which uh, extends a, a Zim container. And one of the advantages there is you get two colors. And if you use the two colors, then you can do things like this. Let's see, what do we have? We had width and height. Where do we make it right here? Width, height, there's the color, but we could also add the second color, color, two and we could make it pink for instance um do you want an alpha on there dot two alpha uh, point eight that makes it a bit translucent so we've got a couple options um we can make zim transparent and then it shows up transparent or translucent like this see that see how you can kind of see through that white no anyway did i save it we refresh and now we're uh, blending from it's an, just an easy gradient from the light to the pink on that and again translucent all right so that was just uh, we could do that by passing in a new gradient color uh, and that could be a radial gradient um, if you want as well um, instead but this is a very quick way and then there's the angle as well there if we wanted angle colon 45 uh, in Zim angles or degrees. And then we're running with the gradient coming from the top left to the, the bottom right. So that was that was already built into Zim page to ha handle some things in Zim page. Um, we've tacked on a few things that Zim page didn't have. For instance, page was usually the whole page and therefore we didn't even bother with corners and border widths. And uh, But here we, we might want that. So we've tacked on a couple of those. And uh, if we look in the class itself. We just make a page, basically, there, is, there we are making a page, and then we tacked on uh, afterwards the changing of the backing to be that. Ah, speaking of backing, uh, the page automatically will add a rectangle that has a backing color. So that, that was the idea behind a page, is like, oh, well, it's just a container with a backing rectangle. That backing rectangle is still in it, it's in the the container, so uh, just watch that as you're adding Zim things. You've, you you you're starting at level zero or layer zero. A um, a uh, rectangle is there, um, and we have given that an automatic property name of backing. So from the outside of this, you can access it with backing, and that's another thing that sort of is going to affect what we're seeing here. Note that if I press on, ah, let me just change this color back so I don't have to look at that. And what else, the angle we don't need. Okay, um, note that when I press on the circle, I move the circle, but the orbit controls are deactivated. Yet when I press on the backing, the orbit controls are still active. For the first while, when we were developing this, by the way, developing it kind of looks, oh, what am I looking at? Okay, back to here, uh, there we go. Uh, developing it was, was this, mapped, map two, map three, map four, map five, six, raw, full, three, blah, testing all different scalings. That was one of the main issues was Zim scales in different ways to 3JS and to map the, the vectors across uh, was very tricky, but I think, I think we've got it for the most part. 
anyway, that sort of development, going through all that, we're at where we are now, which is pretty good, all tidied up, but this used to be kind of all over the place. And in some of the earlier versions, we had, where did my browser go? We had it so that when you pressed on the panel here, it didn't do the orbit controls and you would always have to press off the panel to move. And it was just felt a little bit awkward. So we, you know, it was a bit tricky to figure out how to, how to stop that from happening uh, or, or start it from having, we, we wanted it back to orbit controls when we're on the panel here. So to do that, it detects, and, and there's a few ways we could have done it, but we automatically detect a backing property. And if it's on the backing property, then it does the orbit controls. That is, if you want orbit controls, you don't have to have them. Okay, so in, in, in this in this case, this, this backing isn't even interactive, hence the orbit controls are just from the default orbit controls. But here, we don't want to orbit control while we're dragging or using a slider, obviously. All right, so if it turns out that you don't want to move it, then we're going to have a problem because we've got this backing in here. So the answer is generally we would go to the menu and just say menu.backing equals null. And that will turn the backing property to null, and then you'll get this. Now I press on the backing and nothing happens. This is how it was before where the backing wasn't interactive. And I think you probably will see, yeah, that's kind of annoying because now I have to go out here to straighten my menu or whatever. I can't do it from here. All right, so we'll document that kind of kind of thing. Um, I think I put a little comment in here, I suppose. Uh, what would it be? Um, this um, uncomment, double negative kind of, uncomment to see orbit to not use orbit controls on backing. Okay, I think that's, I think I said it right, yeah. So now we're using orbit controls on the backing. If we uncommented that, we wouldn't be able to. All right, fine. Okay, so that's a little bit about the texture active. And let's see what we're doing with it. We're setting the background of that. Now this is a, then a container, which we can then add things to. So here we are making a new label and we're positioning it. We have a few ways of positioning things in Zim. Dot pose, we'll position it relative to the edges primarily. So zero from the center uh, and 40 from the top on the menu. So this is another slight issue. It's easier in Zim to build not on in a, in a container, just build on the stage. For instance, we could just leave that off and it would center the circle on the stage. Um, so we're often used to building just on the stage. Hey, let's build a bunch of stuff. That's the easiest way. That's what we do most of the time. And it works fine. We could bring the stage in and we would see it on the stage. That's what some of our first um, prototypes were. We just put it on the stage and we showed the whole stage here. Um, but that would mean that you you need to ca you don't actually need to cache the stage, I guess. Oh, that's what we were thinking. We might retro work this a little bit. Um, you don't have to cache the stage because all all that the texture is expecting is a canvas, and we've all we already got a canvas for the whole stage. But then if you put other things on the stage too, you'll end up seeing those other things in your stage menu. So if you're going to do more than one menu, it makes sense to put them in containers so that we can specify which you know which container will go on which which uh, which three D object obviously. And I think that we that having multiple menus will be very common. And remember, we're not only menus, but we're also effects on textures and stuff. So we expect that this will be quite common that there will be lots of them. And that's why we moved away from having everything happen kind of right here in the texture active and connecting it. And we added, a, a, in a sense, a manager down here called uh, texture actives like that. And that expects a list of these and that's what does all the mapping. So we uh, move from a sort of a single mapping concept where we're saying, oh, okay, we'll probably want lots of, lots of these and we um, 
built the texture active and you'll see that in the texture active this is all texture active and here's more in the texture active these guys all expand open to a fair bit well not, not the oh what have i done <laughs> i can't remember that's that one anyway those all expand the pointer moves the biggest one so there's the pointer move with all of its stuff and that's the ray casting and the mapping so we've sort of moved um all of that stuff and, and that then loops through the various menus and when it ray casts it handles each menu as it goes well it actually picks the first menu that it hits because that's what you want to interact with okay so we'll come to that huh. can you imagine this is going to be a fairly long um, under the hood that's all right under the hoods are usually an hour or so and if you want you're welcome to go get a cookie or a snack bar or bit of fruit and enjoy that come back and check out the rest of this okay so reducing the texture actives again coming on back up here and let's just talk about how we've made our menus and stuff in zip as a matter of fact why don't we comment out this is all the 3js stuff so this is how we're kind of expecting the work will go or it could go so let's commenting out all the 3js stuff and let's just have a look at this inside of Zim. We've got two panels that we're doing or two textures that we're going to be planning for. Here's the first one. So that's what you've seen already. Okay, so that's just sitting on the stage. That's the one texture active. The backing is right here. And what we did is we commented out the backing. These things don't usually don't have to be on the stage. Some, some Zim objects have to be on the stage to activate, such as a particle emitter needs to have a stage before it even does anything. So for those, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you would, how, how we will often build in Zim, if we're going to go from page to page, is we put things in a page, we don't add it, or we uh, you know, just comment it out. So for instance, this one just added the backing to the stage like that, comment it out, and it won't add it. So that's how we work with pages. And then eventually, when we're all ready, we throw that into a pages, class or object and the pages object actually does the handling of the transitions and the adding things to this. So anyway, we're quite used to adding one thing at a time and then changing it because we want to work on something else. All right, yeah, that's no problem at all. Um, so anyway, uh, if we were to add this, you'll see what happens over here. Now this second panel has come up over top of the first and that's what it looks like, the big zip Z with this thing called canvas window. Canvas window is what we wanted to brand it. Uh, th this was something under the hood, you know, that was going on in our mind the whole time is, what do we call these things? Um, what are they? What names would be good? How how do we want it? It's, it's half for the code, it's half for the marketing. And canvas window uh, is a wonderful name. I think that that's pretty cool. It's it's descriptive, so it, that means it's um, not exactly a trademark. It's sort of like, because you're not supposed to name something what it is. So what is this? It's a canvas window, <laughs> okay? Don't trademark it that, because um, you're not supposed to. Uh, but anyway, so it's possibly <laughs> trademarkable, but you know, probably not. It's not the best. Um, so... Uh, do we want that though? Because we do we really want a trademark? Because we got Zim. This is a Zim canvas for you know window. That's the that's the issue when you when you've got already a trademark. You don't want to keep on adding things to the framework that have all these zippy names that are kind of weird and you're not sure what they're. In a sense, all of our classes are supposed to be very descriptive. So. Um, that's where we're at, you know, it's, it's sort of too bad. What do we want to tell the world? Uh, we don't want to really tell the world it's canvas window, but, um, we'd rather tell them something amazing like space portal. <laughs> I don't know what it, whatever it might be, uh, Canva win. Um, but anyway, uh, for us in the back end here in Zim, we probably want it to be descriptive. That's the sort of... <laughs> drawback or trade trade off that we have to to work with we then switched it over and we may switch it over here we ran into a problem in that in 3js the thing is called a canvas window because that's actually where the the canvas window is so if i take a look in here there's our material here's our mesh so we get to our mesh 
and I've called it const canvas window is equal to, so the, the actual window to the canvas is in 3.js, which means our stuff in Zim isn't really the window. It's possibly the canvas content, which is, you know, it's okay. But what is it? It's, um, if you take a look at what it specifically is, come, come on in here, it is a texture. So there is our stuff right there. That's how it enters CreateJS, or sorry, not CreateJS, uh, 3JS. It enters as a texture. And so we went, okay, um, it's an interactive texture, but it's not only interactive. It doesn't have to be. It can be just active. It can just be animated. It doesn't even have to be animated. It could just be plain, but then it's sort of like, yeah, we're drawing something on the canvas, coming in as a canvas texture. That, to some degree, is possibly what 3JS is expecting. Is like, like, oh yeah, people can draw on the canvas. Let's bring that in. Um, they also know, uh, in their mind, I'm sure, that this could be interactive then, but it's, or animated, certainly animated. So that would be, okay, the next level of their expectation is, hey, that canvas could be animated. We could bring that in. Um, there's uh, something that you need to do for that texture for it to be animated. And we've done it. You've got to sort of, uh, we actually went all the way back into CreateJS here. And let's have a look, F2, 2, here's the update. Yeah, you need to set the needs update flag to true right there. And we'll come back to why this is added in CreateJS. It seems like kind of an odd, well, we're here now. It seems like an odd place to add it. Uh, but every time Zim changes the canvas, anything happens like a slider slides or a button's pressed or color changes, we have to update the stage. And at that time, the canvas, uh, the texture also needs to be updated. So instead of sitting on the back saying, okay, now we've done something, update the texture, we work this right in, as long as there's this CreateJS remote queue here, we work this right into the update in CreateJS, which means that any time that Zim updates, it will automatically do two things, update the cache, that's, that's unique, usually, We've got to handle that in Zim, and you know, as we're making, we sort of say, oh, if we're caching something and it changes, we got to update it. We got to update it outside. Well, this is us saying, okay, if this whole system is based on updating cache, I don't want to have to keep on updating cache on the outside, and I don't want to keep on setting the texture map um, update on the outside either. So we uh, created a remote queue, which passes materials in, or not materials, but um, passes objects in, or an object in actually, and on that object, that's the Zim object, on that Zim object, we record the texture map of that Zim object when we get it, and we're going to see that. We haven't seen that yet. That means it's we have to have a sort of a re auto registering system where we make some Zim stuff, great, it gets used as a texture map, great, but then something has to say, unless unless you are going to say, so over here in our texture, back in our thing here, when we set up that texture and we then make a mesh of it, um, right here we could have said something like uh, texture, what was it, um, canvas? What do we call our thing again? <laughs> That's our texture active. So we could have said texture active dot register or something like that register the and then combine the two of them we could have said something like the menu has this material we want the map of it though but anyway something like that okay we could have uh, sort of said that's how we um, register it and basically what this would be doing is it would be saying oh uh, now we have a material that we're going to have to update in CreateJS. So the, the grunt of that would be add that to the queue here so that we can update the cache and update the, the material. Okay, But we decided not to go that route because it's just one extra thing. So it's so nice to be able to just say, this was tricky too and it was bothersome. I'd love to just say, pass in the menu there. 
but the menu is not a canvas. So the menus, the Zim object, so dot canvas. So we, you know, we're stuck with, it used to be dot cache canvas. So if you're familiar with CreateJS and Zim, we always, uh, CreateJS called it always cache canvas. We always called it cache canvas and Zim, you know, just going along with it. Uh, but here, when we're dealing with 3JS, who doesn't really know anything about Zim, I would rather not have them have to say cache canvas there. So we have adjusted Zim and, and Zim 1.5 to not only create a cache canvas, it will, it will sort of leave that as ca cache canvas for backwards compatibility, uh, but we also just said that that's also called the canvas. And that works for the most part. And I think that maybe uh, the issue is it works for everything, all the objects that we're caching, except the stage. Because if we cache the stage, it gets a cache canvas, but the canvas is the original canvas, not the cached canvas. I don't think it'll matter because the original canvas has the, the stuff on it anyway, so I think it's fine. But those are two slightly different, um, the properties for a stage, like if you cache a stage, it gets a cache canvas, and that cache canvas is different than its original canvas. Whereas uh, everything else, if you, anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So that were, that's where the conflict with CreateJS might have been. That's maybe why they didn't just call it Canvas, is that you could cache the stage and get something different. So they said, eh, the, only thing, the only thing we can do is call it something else. So we're going to call it Cache Canvas. Anyway, you guys in 3JS don't really need to know that. So we, we brought it into just Canvas, making it easier. So this is pretty easy. I think we haven't looked at this part yet officially because we're still back up on the Zim stuff. But we're, we're going to come to this. Um, all right, why don't we, yeah, do that and we'll come back to it later. So I'll just uh, produce this stuff here, get back to comments, and we're back up top in the Zim side. Okay. So there's our menu, our label. We were talking about positioning. That's right. Oh, and we were talking about the fact that we've added all of this to the menu. So in general, you can add it all to the stage and do just one thing and pass the stage in there. And that would, uh, or the stage is canvas. Um, that would work. Uh, that would work. And we did that initially. But we're trying to gear you up towards uh, not using the stage, but rather putting each of your menus or each of these uh, texture actives that we want on there. Uh, another point, we, we maybe didn't quite get to it, but it was like, what do we call it? What do we call it? What do we call it? And we, and we were talking about that because I just showed you the back of it here with canvas window. So canvas window was what it is in 3JS. And therefore, Maybe when we go to market this to the 3JS people, we will call it canvas window. Oh, you know, you guys, you can make a canvas window. And um, I don't know, because we had to come up with something on the Zim side. Instead of canvas content, we thought, hey, what is this? It's a texture. Um, so we're continuing this, this doc, sorry, bouncing around a bit. What is it? It's a texture. Um, it could be just a, a plain texture, like this is. It could be an animated texture, or it could be an interactive texture. And so uh, interactive texture is kind of, was a little bit lengthy. Um, initially, we said, okay, it, we, it's not always interactive, so that's what the, the problem. If we say interactive texture, people don't know that it can be used for an animated texture or a plain texture. So interactive texture is too specific. So we went, okay, well, instead of interactive texture, what about an active texture? Active, because then it's doing something. It's animating or you can interact. So active texture seemed to accomplish both of those things. And we went, yes, active texture. So for a while it was active texture. Then we realized <laughs> CreateJS already had an active texture in it. 3JS already had an active texture in it. And that's whichever texture is active, currently active, like uh, chosen. <laughs> It's like, oh, oh, okay, that sucks. That's that's sort of a very minimal usage of, of the word active, you know, like, oh, it could have been better. That just means whatever's selected. That, that would have been selected texture would have been maybe uh, fine. Or, uh. Anyway, unfortunately, we lost active texture. So we scratched our head a little bit and changed it to interactive texture and said, 
Well, that's the most important thing, the fact that these textures indeed are interactive. Let's, <laughs> let's put some visuals to that, shall we? So I'll just comment out the add to here of the menu. If I can get a comment going. Um, and so now we have, oh, did I save it? What is that? Menu, moving to Zoom. Oh, that's the menu. Okay. We want to comment out. I'm wondering why that wasn't down on its own line there for easy commenting. So we said, okay, the interactive texture is going to be the more important thing. We'll make do with interactive texture. And we ran with that for a little while. And then I thought, okay, that's too bad. It is what it is, but it's it's limited because it's not also saying animated texture. So we flipped it, or we, the royal we, and instead of calling it active texture, called it texture active. And that actually rings, like interactive texture is a little lengthy. Um, that actually rings pretty nicely. So active tech, if I can remember, texture active is what it is, texture active. And so now we might, it depends, um, perhaps once we get to the back of this, like on the back, instead of saying canvas window, what it does, maybe we will say texture active. But <clears throat> I don't know. I think canvas window is still pretty strong. So that remains to be seen. Uh, you know, it could be canvas window using the Zim texture active, you know, and, and, and sort of mark it with the Zim side is texture active. The 3JS is canvas window. That seems friendlier or something like that. We really liked it. It looked, it looked good in, in the world there when you spun that. Uh, that's something that we might do. We've got the backing and we may, uh, we, we do have this make icon already. And then make icon, oh, it's not actually a make icon, it's made with. So we do have a make icon, which is just the icon, but we also have in Zim a made with, which is a little icon that has made with Zim underneath. And we hope that people who make their apps will possibly use that and we use it all the time. That's another thing that might happen with these panels. If the panels go into VR, it might be nice to be able to see the panel was made with Zim by putting it on the back like that. That looks pretty cool. People maybe won't mind. So I think what we could do is possibly work this right into possibly, it, it means bringing in the mesh to it as well. There's the backing mesh right there. Uh, and as much as we can, we're not really wanting to bring 3JS stuff into the Zim classes. We, had, we did it with the Raycaster. We had a choice. Do we have them pass in a Raycaster? and specify the Raycaster, but we decided to embed the Raycaster in what we're doing, and that way we can highlight a few things about the Raycaster that we that we want to highlight. For instance, um, if we're using layers and near and far. So those two, those that set of things right there is what we want with the Raycaster. We also, while I'm right here, uh, we also added an ignore list, which is handy because if you put something in front, I don't know if we still have that, but in one of our versions, we put something in front. And the question is, is do you want that to block the interaction or is that okay to be there and we can still interact through it? So there is an ignore list and you can interact through things that you're ignoring, which is kind of cool. And that would allow people to say, apply a layer over top of it kind of, or like an object over top of it that's, uh, I don't know, animating, swirling in some way that they want, and then we can just interact right through it. Um, all right, so where were we on all of this stuff? I think we had talked about embedding that backing texture right in the Zim class here, the Texture Actives class, and it would be then available to turn off or something based on that, I don't know, or turn on. I don't know. It might might be too complicated to do that because it's not only panels you're doing with a, one side and another side. It, it, you might be mapping onto a cylinder. We can't wait to try that, mapping this onto a cylinder. Imagine uh, mapping Zim onto a cylinder where the whole cylinder then acts as a slider or something like that. So you could be on any side of this cylinder and drag this bar up and down. That will be no problem at all to do that kind of thing. 
We can have patterns on stuff. Um, that's the other thing is whatever Zim can do here, um, it can do two, three JS things. So we have to remember that. Maybe what we can do is just briefly here, take a look. Uh, so I'm going out to Zim, um, going to examples. I'm trying to think of where some examples are. Uh, there was a world, so let's see. So here's Zim. If you haven't seen Zim, all these types of things can be made with Zim. We're making interactive NFTs. That, oh, that's where we are right now. That's why I'm seeing them. I don't want to look at the collections, I don't think. So I'm going under to the various code pens. I know there was a world code pen, and there was one that has a, like, this kind of thing. Did I do? So this is this is Zim, a Zim swiper controlling it. That's not even the orbit controls, I don't think. And what is this doing? This is Zim controlling. So there's Zim spinning something and bringing up different pictures on there every time it spins of Dr. <laughs> Abstract Dancing. Okay, so uh, great. We don't necessarily need to see that, but that was one example of Zim controlling the, the phone there. Is that, do you see a world here somewhere? There's one, a 3D planet. I can't remember what exactly this is doing. This is Zim sort of spinning a world and showing a highlight on there of where, uh, so this is a Zim list and you'll be able to use a Zim list just like this on your, um, on your planes. And there we are spinning a 3D world. Um, there was one where we map colors can't remember where that was. We mapped color. Maybe it was this one. Yeah. So here is using a color picker to change the model colors. So that would be available. You can definitely see how this will be a uh, be pretty amazing. And, and this one as well. We're using sliders to bring things closer and farther. We're using a dial to spin it. I mean, you don't have to do that if you've got orbit controls, but you can see Imagine that that would work. One thing is, is we cannot take this whole panel here, which is too bad. We can't take this whole panel and put it onto a 3JS panel because this is 3JS itself overlaid on top of the canvas. So it won't come into the panel as the cash canvas or as the canvas um, because it's overlaid. But that doesn't really matter. We just pop this object right up in front of the panel and start using the panel. And this is the 3D object sitting outside of Zim. So there, there's no real reason, I don't think, to put a 3D object into Zim and then put that flat 3D thing onto the panel. I mean, it might be handy sometimes, but I don't think we ever really want to do that. You may as well just have this 3D. You couldn't even really tell. The only thing is, is if I'm, this is the Zim panel here. If I'm moving that all over the place, then I would have to move the 3, 3D object all over the place too, which would work with the orbit controls, no problem. This thing's just sitting. Really, the orbit controls aren't moving the panel. The orbit controls are uh, moving the camera. But um, anyway, so you'd have this 3D object just sitting next to the panel, and then you'd use the panel. So if you were using the controls that, uh, like first person controls and moving around in the 3D world, like your avatar is moving around, there'd be the panel, and here'd be the 3D object next to the panel. And then you'd use Zim Zim color picker here to change the colors on the model next to it or on the texture next to it. All right, so those are a couple examples of using Zim in 3D space. And we'll probably take that phone and put it in to um, uh, 3JS and then we'll put a Zim panel on, on that phone and have the, the phone, that was something we all, oops, uh, that was something that we always kind of wanted to do was have Zim working in the phone. And now we can do that. So can you imagine? We'll have a little interface right here and it will all be interactive. We could even play a little Zim game right in that phone and it, that little Zim game should all work. Uh, that's a good idea. It says we make a lot of games for mobile. Cool, huh? Uh, here, by the way, um, if you want to see the types of things that Zim is doing, here's the Zim store where we brought a couple mobile games right in. Uh, this one is called Dazzle Finger. 
So this could be on that phone and you could then drag this around and play. So Zim's got, so that should be totally possible to play all that on there. Here's one where you're trying to guess uh, which robot is the odd robot. No, okay, I got it wrong. Or which robot's the evil one? Which one is the evil nope. one? Oh, do you guys see an evil one? Yes, there it is. Okay, so that's a little game where we're picking odd robots. You'll have menus like this that can show up. Then, oh, that's an account. Okay, anyway, you get the idea. Um, so back in then to let's go up to the top part. We were talking more about what we were working on in the Zim side to get here. We have, do I have a browser open anymore? No, I don't. I'm going to have to do a slight desktop reveal for a sec. Get my browser and I managed to close something and we want to look at what we got going on. Open and default browser. There we go. So that's uh, currently what we're looking at. Um, let's see, where is that stuff that's down here? Let's talk about the, so that's just got the, um, the make icon added there with the, with the label put on the canvas. Let's talk about the other one though. So just briefly, how did we put these parts on here? If you've come from uh, the 3JS world, then there's all sorts of videos uh, in the learn section. It's a good place to start on how to learn Zim. Um, let's uh, take a look. Zim's got style, which is very cool. We're, as far as we know, we're the only Canvas framework with style, very much like CSS. But there we're setting in a line and a line height. That's going to just affect our label, I think, down here. It got separated from that. Should probably move that down. Uh, not that it matters, but anyway, there's some style for the label. Hopefully, we didn't need anything align center. No, this doesn't have an align center, so it won't be affected or align height. So, you may have noticed when we use Zim, there's normal parameters like that where we put the parameters in order and we pass in dollar undefined to to do the defaults. But we also have parameters that we're using like this. And that's because we wanted to get to the corner parameter, which was over here, which was farther along. So we didn't have to do that. It's, we call it the Zim Duo technique. Turns out I just discovered, oh darn, that that, um, that other language, Python, does this. But we do it as well in Zim. As far as I know, we're the only Canvas framework that allows for either parameters passed in as a configuration object, like that, or at, in order. And we've open sourced that uh, so that, hey, if 3JS wanted to do that too, they could use um, our code to do that. It's quite complicated code, but it's um, not all that much and it's nice. And the way we do it in our classes is if the code is going to be minified or if it's ES6 code, which uh, 3JS is, then we need to provide a signature with the same, like a string version of those same parameters. And we pass that into what we call Zob for Zim object. Uh, we, I can't remember what we call it. We may have called it Zob when we open sourced it too. But that's it. That's what you do to your class. And then you'll be able to, it will end up recalling the class with the parameters uh, sorted out in order, proper order based on these things. So that's next. That, and we're going to be moving. This is an under the hood. This is what we're moving into Zim. So all of our Zim classes have this. All of our Zim classes as well handle style, and they do that with another couple lines up here, which we haven't added yet. So when we move this class into Zim, we'll handle style, which means uh, if we styled a certain width or a color or whatever, um, this Zim texture could receive that style. At the moment, it can't though. All right. So anyway, that's a little bit about how how and why we're doing our parameters here. We just wanted to jump right to the corner and didn't want to bother with the angle and the color, border color and border width. So we dropped to the configuration object rather than using the parameters in order and putting in a bunch of nulls. Uh, by the way, we're Zim is ES5 in the background and we like it that way. I think we're fine. Maybe, maybe one day we'll move to ES6, I'm not sure. But one of the differences is we can pass in null and that will trigger our default parameters. Yay. So, so. Sucks that you, you guys can't in ES6 anymore. Oh, well. <laughs> maybe maybe one day, like one out of, I don't know, a thousand times you'd want to pass a null into a parameter. I don't know. It seems to me that that's 
kind of ridiculous. But anyway, uh, you have to pass in the whole undefined. We actually came across that <laughs> like a, down below here. Remember, we've got our uh, Raycaster. So here's our, yeah, I should have uncommented that, I guess. Let me uncomment that for a sec. <laughs> did not uncomment. Uncomment and open. Right. Um, we passed in our Raycaster. Or no, we didn't pass in our Raycaster. We used our Raycaster in here. So somewhere in here there's a Raycaster. Do you see it? Looping textures. And explore. There it is. New 3GS Raycaster. And we, it, we broke it. We went null. Null, null, near, and far, because we didn't need those first two parameters. Null, null, near, far, and we got this. Oh, we, we don't, we didn't run the, the, yeah, sorry, we didn't run it, so we wouldn't see it. But anyway, that would give us an error because it didn't know, it thought it was activating on null or interacting on null. That was like, anyway, what we meant was, please use the defaults, undefined. So, whatever. I just cannot bring myself to typing that big, long word undefined when... Null would be fine. So anyway, um, back to it here. Uh, right, we're adding that to the stage. That's so we can see it. Uh, we set a style. We already saw that stuff. Here we are gonna. Gr we're gonna grab some colors. So why did we do a series of colors here? Why do we need a series? I don't know if we need a series anymore. Where, where did we make colors? Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, when we first made this, we every time we clicked it, we changed the color, and we wanted those colors to be in a series, so that's what this the series was. But I don't even think we're using this anymore. There's colors for circle. Yeah, uh, right, okay. Sorry about that. So we'll just make this purple. But that's a Zim series, and it's pretty cool. It's called Dynamic, dynamic uh, Parameters. It means that we can, um, if we were uh, had five circles, we could style it and pass in a series. The first circle would be the first one in that series. The next one would be the next color in the series. If we do something like tile a bunch of stuff, uh, we could tile a circle that has a series of colors and every circle it makes in the tile, it would, it would grab the next one in a series. If we are emitting something, we can emit things in order. We can... Um, we could do an interval through a series of times, like say a series of one second, three seconds, one second, three seconds. And every time it does the interval, it will pick from that. So we call that ZimV uh, or ZimPick values. And we open source that as well. Uh, it's dynamic parameters. It is amazing in Zim. But like I said, if you, if you want to learn Zim and see all of the things about Zim, go to the Zim site, look in the learn section. You'll find many, many videos that are all about that. Uh, here we're kind of just giving you a little bit of a flavor as we go through about uh, some of some of what Zim can do. <laughs> Mind you, just just deleted that part, didn't I? But anyway, that's fine. That was an older example before we added the color picker, where we were just pressing on the circle. Every time we pressed it, we wanted the next color from a series, and it was that easy. So uh, here we've got a button with a label of spin. Note that we the first two parameters of a button are the width and the height. And so rather than go null null using the defaults there or auto auto, we um, went uh, just right to the label with the spin. That is a bit of a curse. And I don't know if we'll ever fix that. We want it to be consistent throughout our components with width and heights to start. Not everything has a label. so. Uh, whenever we have a width and height on a component, we start with it. But it does mean that our very common button, which we often will just use the defaults for that, are either null, null, label, or we go to the label spin. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, so be it. And this is an under the hood, by the way, where, where we are right now. And that's why we're talking about things like that. If the idea behind under the hood is maybe you'll want to build like this as well, and you'll, you'll have these quick quandaries. <laughs> you'll be going, oh, okay, what order do we do these parameters? And so maybe you like to hear other people who also have those quandaries. <laughs> All right, so we're positioning that button 50, 50 from the left bottom on the menu. And that's how we get 50 over and 50 up. When, when we position things, we have a couple choices. We can center, 
We can center reg, which will center the registration point and center. We can loc. What loc does is it locates the registration point. So this might be located uh, from here and here, but pose is different. It positions the edges of things. So we found that very handy. It's very much like um, left, right, uh, top, bottom positioning in CSS, uh, but we also have center. You can position from center, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, and so that's been handy, especially for arranging interfaces around the edges of stuff. When we tap on it, note that we're chaining this button. Where did that come from? I don't know. Do you know? Button spin, tap. There's a tap. What's that? Is that here? That's here. So what happened to all this animating call button? Circle.animate is there. Tap. Uh, yeah, that's over. Okay, right. So um, we're chaining here where we've got a button and we dot pose it and we're chaining on a dot tap. We might not even need to. Are we ever using this button again? Probably not. No, I don't think so. So we don't even need to put that in a variable. Usually we don't. So there's a new button and we've just chained this stuff on. Let's have a look and see if it works. I don't think we ever referenced the button again, although it's not spinning. Huh. Why isn't it spinning? Button dot mouse, slider dot mouse. Oh, okay, we're getting an error. All right, so we did reference it where Ah, right. We wanted to turn the um, the button off. So as it's animating, we don't want them to press it again and, and mess that up. So that's, that was just a decision that we made, and we must have turned the button off. So that's why we had a const button in there is equal to. But because we're chaining, normally we don't have to. And we could have used the e.target. So we could have collected e in here. And when we went to turn the button off, we could have used e.target. And then we wouldn't have needed the button. Is that all we use the button for? Let's have a look. Uh, button dot no mouse e dot target dot no mouse. We don't always need to do that. I can't remember why we decided we didn't want them to spin and spin and spin. But you see what we mean? We 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 don't let it spin uh, while it's already spinning. Um, and yeah, that's all we used the button for, just so we didn't have to go to the e dot target. <laughs> Sometimes we're lazy like that. Uh, not only that, but um, is, there, is that it? I think that was it. Yeah. Oh, not quite. There we go. Uh, not only that, but if we have a circle in a const and we have a slider in a const, it's just to be consistent to help you know that that's a button, you know. So anyway, sometimes labeling can be a bit more clear anyway. So we're tapping, we're rotating our circle rotation of 360. Why are we doing that? Ran 360. Oh, uh, that was just so that as we spin this thing, you see how we're rotating the whole circle and therefore as we spin it, it's spinning about a different axis. Uh, if we didn't do that, then just spinning always about uh, the same axis. Okay, which would have been fine too. Can make that bigger and still spin around that. By the way, that circle, all of, all of this stuff, I, we decided to make the circle, not all of it, but we decided to make the circle an alpha of uh, 0.8. So that's how we chained on the setting of the alpha, or if we didn't have it, then it would be an alpha of one and that would be more solid. But we like the fact that we can kind of see through the circle a little bit to the background. So we decided to demonstrate that the objects as well as the backing of the panel, but the objects themselves can be transparent. And that can be a lot of fun. We can have very translucent um, stuff happening, effects on things, and you see through it into the other room and you're seeing through translucency. You know, that's, that's wonderful. And that can all happen on the panel and in the objects of the panel. Okay, but anyway, let's bring back the slight alpha on that. There's where we're saying don't don't use the slider on the scale. Oh, I know why we did that. At one point, we were um, animating the scale, and we also had the slider for the scale. I don't really think it's going to care. What are we animating to? It depends on slightly on how we animate. We're animating the scale as we tap it. 
what are we circle dot animate the scale as we tap it um, as we tap what as we tap the button I thought we were animating what am I looking at here thought we were and oh scale X yeah okay the spin ah right and the slider scales okay there slider is scaling and the spin is scaling so that spin is actually um, animating the scale X and having these two things happen at the same time will mess mess it up so basically we're saying and that's just because we're either sliding or animating the same property uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have to bother with all this no mouse and mouse. So th that's Zim's way of combining mouse children equals false and mouse enabled equals false. So that's always a tricky thing. If you have some an object and you want to turn its mouse off and you go mouse enabled false, well, the children might be still enabled. So you'd have to turn off mouse children and mouse enabled. And instead of always having to tell that, you know, hey, I teach this too. This is the trickiest part of, you know of interactive media, we made it a little bit easier by just saying no mouse, and that will turn off the children and the uh, enabled, and then mouse will bring them back. Okay, so that's that. And we're resetting the scale each time before we animate, and then we're animating to uh, a certain loop, or looping four times on that, and animating to a negative scale. So that goes from a scale of whatever the original scale is. That's tricky because it's not just one, so it's not just animate to negative one because it may have been scaled with the slider. So that's a bit trickier than it you know, normally would need to be, but that's in there and we're calling, we're resetting things after the animation finishes. So this is Zim Animate, very easy. As a matter of fact, we can animate 3JS stuff. Um, too bad I just took that out. Let me see, it was probably in one of these. Let's look at map four and see if we've still got it in there. Event listener window pointer up. Let's do it just to search on animate. Ticker dot add. No. Back to two. I'll find animate. No, that's just the circle. When did we do that? Maybe back on mapped even. No, nothing in mapped. Map two. I know we had it at some point. Six. Okay, so this is a 3JS mesh called Canvas Window right there. So there's Canvas Window. I'm going to set the scale to 0, 0, 0 to start, and then I'm using Zim Animate. So and the way Zim started off is it was a bunch of functions that operated on CreateJS objects. And then it just sort of oh, completely overtook CreateJS and it, uh, it uh, extends CreateJS containers and, and therefore everything is Zim and we you put these functions as methods. So you, if you were making a circle, the circle is, extends a CreateJS container. That circle now has an animate method. But it started off with an animate function that still works um, that you could animate. And in here you would say target whatever the, the 3JS circle that you made, which it didn't even have a circle. You have to animate a 3JS shape that ha had a circle drawn into it. Zim came along and said, well, you know, why do those three or four lines every time? Let's just make a circle. And so we have a circle. But anyway, uh, the target would operate on CreateJS stuff. Well, it also can operate on the DOM. So much like Greensock, uh, Zim can animate DOM elements as well, because CreateJS could animate DOM elements. We have uh, completely overhauled pretty well the animation process so that we have, in instead of chaining the anim, uh, so what CreateJS did is it chained its animation on the tween or on the tween object. Well, we've got chaining and that meant that uh, you could never uh, chain and animation onto the Zim objects. So we completely redid the sort of the interface to um, CreateJS, plus we added tons of different animation features. We have as many animation features as Greensock, if not more. We can animate along paths, we can drag along animated paths, all done through animation with extra things in there, and uh, we can do shape tweens, we can et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, but all of those are available just on animate, which can be chained. 
Anyway, this is animate the animate function, and we would then specify the target being the canvas window. The properties, note that we've got dot, dot syntax property animation as well, because that's a bit, you know, that's one of the only things that I find awkward about 3JS is to go get to the rotation scale, and maybe some other things, position. We have to do the X, Y, and Z on those objects. It's kind of like, it's okay, I guess. Sort of, it, it, it's clean, it's nice. But here we're, uh, but we, but you know, we really, if you think about it, we do not have a single property scale rotation, you know, any of those transforms. And that would, in Zim, you do. Okay, so if you want them, that's as scale X, well, it's X, Y, scale X, scale Y. So those that would have been the option to go in 3JS. They could have just called it scale X, scale Y, scale Z, um, X, Y, Z for position, and rotation X, rotation Y, rotation Z for those, rather than putting them on their own objects. That's what I would have done, but that's there might be other reasons for it, and so be it. Anyway, whatever. But here we are animating the dot properties of that. And there we are waiting after a certain time, times and seconds, and uh, with an ease. And that would ease all of this stuff back in. Do you want to see what that would look like? So I'm going to copy that. And I think it was all commented out, though, in that version. No. And come out back into Texture Active. We want to bring back all the 3JS stuff. Uh-oh. Bring back all the 3JS stuff. It looks like in a couple steps because all of that is already commented. Rip. What an explorer. Oh, this is not an explorer, but it's like an explorer. We have Zim Explorers, which just take you through a bunch of stuff. This is like an explorer, but it's under the hood. So I've got all that stuff in there. And here is our mesh for that. And we will paste in. Canvas window, we're still operating on that. Zero, yeah, that looks good. So you ready? Bum, bum, bum. Broken, F12, what happened? Unexpected identifier mesh. Somehow that got poorly commented. And here we go. Okay. See that? Let's try. Oh, rotation won't quite work because we didn't double side it. Oh, we could maybe do that. So those are all the scales. Anyway, you could also uh, do the rotation as you go. By the way, speaking of double sided, right now, now it looks like that's on the second side. Let's just see that again. Do you like that? Isn't that cool? And that, that, that works just fine if, if you had that <laughs> trying to turn it as a, you know, it works just fine in world. All that still works. Isn't that cool? So we can animate, and this will, will be very handy for you. We can animate stuff using Zim. Uh, so you don't need to bring in Greensock and animate that. You can learn how to use the Zim stuff. We are constantly coming in, by the way. Let's have a look here. Um, here is Zim. Down at the bottom of the front page, here's the amount of code that Zim uses compared to other frameworks or systems. So there's, uh, and it's not really Green Sock's fault, but there's HTML, CSS, this example right here. Oh, sorry, uh, it's a picture of the examples. Uh, this is all of the examples. There's a Green Sock one. I don't know what Green Sock's doing, but it's some sort of system where it's animating over top and that had nothing to do with the hearts but as you roll over it it animates um, we did it at 22 percent the size of the html version and there's a picture of the html version is there another gsap one here no but um there is pixie and phaser and you can see that we're we're coming in less so anything that we've done with green sock, this might not be all of them but we've also compared other green sock things uh, usually we're on par or less than in, in terms of size, sometimes half. So there you go. But Green Sock's pretty amazing too. Um, anyway, we can animate three JS objects, and that was that in there doing. I'm going to comment that out though. May as well leave it in here. Sort of handy. What did I want to get at though next? What were we talking about? Oh yeah, the fact that um, 
the, what about the other side of this? Bum, bum, bum. So the other side currently is the backing, but if we comment out the backing, if we comment out the backing, just beware. Watch what happens. We refresh. And if I F11 here, F12 here, it says testing, 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 testing. So I refresh again. See that testing? Fast, and then every half a second. So what that testing is doing is it's trying to find, we passed in a bunch of materials, or potential materials, so Zim objects, and we want to find out if We've, uh, if 3JS has mapped those objects, uh, those objects as texture. So that's what it does really quickly there. Test, 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 test. And then it slows down. Well, anyway, it couldn't find the backing. We've, we've not mapped the backing, so it's going to continue looking for a backing. So you see how we passed in menu and backing? If we only want to pass in one thing, we can do this. And here's what happens. Refresh. Okay, so it tested just once. And then it registered because it tested after 0.1 seconds or 0.01 seconds or whatever it was. I think it was 0.05 seconds. Uh, it was already there. And therefore, we're working. Note there's no backing now. Okay, there wouldn't have been a backing even if we passed in backing there. So let's go back again. By the way, for that, you can pass in an array of one thing or just one thing. We tend to like to do that. We just test in under the hood. We test, hey, is that object an array? So that, that's done with not capital array dot is array round brackets the object so if it's not an array then we add it to the array then we say array with the object in it and that's how we handle that um, anyway oh do you want to see that i think we have it here texture actives yeah it would be up in here but that was confusing so if there's not textures we make textures an empty array if uh, textures is not an array, so this means is textures not an array, then we set textures equal to whatever textures is inside an array, and we use that all the time. We're also using it for the ignore list. That means you can pass in just one thing for the ignore list, or you can pass in an array of things, and we use it for the layers. Uh, apparently, um, yeah, I think we set it up. That's right. We set it up. We were careful. We wanted to set it up. What if you had menu systems on one layer and you had animations on another layer and you wanted to raycast both of those layers? So uh, we were sort of saying, oh, you know, this is a pain. Just put it on, put anything you want to raycast for the textures on one layer. <laughs> you know, much easier. <laughs> anyway, it's not all that hard. First of all, we had to make sure that the layers were put in an array and then when we made the ray caster which was somewhere here I can't remember where. see a ray caster anywhere all right it's after this testing uh this by the way is the registration testing right there it's a little lengthy it's a bit complicated but anyway ray caster there it is and here if layer's length is greater than zero uh, then loop through the layers and set the ray the set the raycaster so that it will check those layers. That's how it's how it's done. All right, so it wasn't all that hard to do, but we had to figure out how to do it. And then just beware that when you make your let me reduce this down, when you make your layer, if you want it enabled, you put it. That's how you do it. Canvas whatever the mesh layers has the layers property, and you enable layer one on it. Um, that's really neat. If we didn't do that, and we are making our texture actives, that's the layer right there, say one, watch what happens. I don't know, this might possibly break. I'm not sure what I was doing. Huh? It doesn't interact. So now it, it completely ignores it. What I was trying to do, though, is show you the backing there. You see how there's no backing at the moment? I want to show you this double-sided. Anyway, let's uh, bring that back to... Uh, layer 1, wherever that was. There. Okay, so there's the mesh. We've taken away the backing. So there's the backing gone. Oh, I don't actually... Let's see, how do I... I don't want to actually animate that stuff in, so let's treat it like that. Double comment. Okay, 
and we're in a bit of a mess here. I've got, okay, so this stuff's all commented. Oh, that means that's fine to be commented because I'm going to end up commenting all of this stuff out, aren't I? I can't remember. Yeah, because I'll comment that back in. All right, um, let's see the backing. So on our texture right here, there's we've mapped our, our menu. This is for the menu. We're going to bring in three double-sided. This is amazing. Refresh. Okay, so now we're back to, since we put that on layer one, we're able to spin that and work it out. You ready? There it all is in behind. It's all, it's backwards. Probably could have arranged it so it's not backwards, but <laughs> I thought that was fascinating. It's like, holy cow, it's remapped the whole thing backwards. And at this point, I just said, I love 3JS, I love Mr. Doob. <laughs> you know, it's like, holy cow. I've always loved Zim. Zim is, Zim is amazing too, but isn't that cool? So we managed to have um, made a, a menu that works uh, from either side of it. Uh, I'm not totally sure how you would invert that material. There might be a way to do it on the other side. You could just sort of duplicate this mesh, I guess, and make it meshed looking this way. So I'm sure that would be fine, but it might be nice to be able to just flip that. Was there a flip on the material? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know 3JS quite well enough. Uh, maybe this will get me in there um, doing it. There probably is some sort of control on that. But note that they're using the configuration object here. But as far as I know, they cannot pass in those parameters in order. It expects a configuration object, and that's what you have to give it. So just beware, Zim, on anything that uses Zim Duo, which is most of the things it would apply to, almost all the classes and methods, uh, that you know that you would like if it's got one parameter then sometimes we don't bother but anyway uh, you can use the Zim duo technique within Zim all right let's comment that back out do you remember what we have to do we have to remember not to bring back the meshing okay and then we want to go back up to Zim and we're almost there I think just talking about the Zim stuff and we can come back in to see what we did in the 3JS stuff it's like, oh my god, really? So how far should I go? I guess I can do all of this stuff. There we go. And which one are we looking at in Zim? Nothing. So why is that F12? I probably commented out. Oh, <laughs> okay. I went too far. That's the Zim stuff. I meant to stop that at the 3JS there we go so that was just the zim empty zim canvas and now we're back to back to this so up in the zim we have talked a bit about the tapping and the animating there's our slider so here's our slider we position that on the menu when it changes so we have a chainable tap and a chainable change we found that most of our components use either tap or change Otherwise, we would have to come out of chaining and use the on method. So we have an on method. We could have said slider dot on and put a change in there, quote change, comma, and do all of this stuff right here. Runk, paste, and not bothered with the change stuff. Okay, so that's... Uh, still work all right so we do have the on method that's like an ad event listener uh, but we decided in CreateJS or Grant Skinner decided in CreateJS to call it on thank you very much yay all right so we have methods like that on everything and you have a click method and a mouse down method and a press move method and all these methods that you can use but uh, we uh, first of all for press move and stuff we've added a single drag so note note that we've got a circle with its alpha centered on the menu and we're dragging it. That's it. We chose on top false, otherwise that drag would no naturally bring the object up onto the top of its container. But actually, let me just not do this for a second. And we'll, I'll set that to, well, take it out. 
So that's our normal drag would have, would not have that. And then you're with this. Um, if I drag that, it's on top. It's uh, oh, it's kind of cool too. Its alpha is is down, um, but now I now I can't pick that thing up because it's on top. I can't get the slider. I mean, I can't get the slider knob. And if if its alpha weren't down, I wouldn't be able to see it, etc. So we don't want the circle to come up on top. Usually, the thing you pick up would come up on top. So uh, we've given it a directive here on top colon false like that. And now, did I refresh? Now when we pick it up, it's behind the stuff, so I can operate on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the slider, and we're setting this, the slider scale, or we could have done it this way. Slider.scale is equal to slider.currentValue. That's just a little bit longer. Uh, so any anywhere where we're doing the, the, the short chainables, like alp, alp, Instead, we could have done it like this, circle dot alpha equals 0.8. But that would mean, uh, and we wouldn't do it in here, that would mean that we'd have to reference the circle. And sometimes, uh, quite often, when we're chaining like this, we don't even need to store it in a variable because we just chained everything on it and it's how we want it, and so we don't bother. But if we needed to access it later, as we need to do here with the, the button and stuff, then that, um, that's either way it would have worked. Okay, so uh, same with X and Y. Instead, we would use low compose the next and Y. Same with rotation. We have a rotation property, but we would use dot rote. And there's dot size for size. There's dot um, the, to set the width and height. So we find that we chain all the time and we love it, and that's one of the ways that we're 67% uh, less code than other things is because we chain, and we don't have to keep on uh, rewriting the variable name and assign it to a variable. So that's cool, huh? And that's all very short in the background. That's just a wrapper function that just basically sets the alpha. Some of them are a little bit longer, but that's a nice short one. All of that stuff, by the way, is available here in Zim in the docs. So these are the docs. You can search for anything like uh, rote, like that. And here's rotation. Or if you scroll on down, how it's organized is there's stuff to do with the frame. Here's our display things. There's all of our components like labels, buttons, emoji pickers, label letters, windows, pages, panels, tips, progress bars, indicators, text input. So we've got something like 40 components that all work the same way, that have all these parameters, but you can set them with the Zimduo technique if you want. We've got numpads, D-pads, uh, keyboards. So we've got a keyboard, okay? There's a keyboard on a panel, that'll, that'll work. So we're looking forward to showing you through how many of these can uh, go into um, 3JS panels interfaces. And then here's the various methods uh, that there are. Um, there's all the short chainables, pose, loc, move, blend, bleh, for blend modes, dies, etc. cetera. Uh, various interactions like dragging and animating and binding. Oh, animating might be somewhere else. A bunch of hit tests. There's animating stuff. Okay, and then after that are the controls. So guides and hotspots and wrappers. Wrapping, wrappers wrap things. Beads put uh, objects along, along paths. Uh, tiles, tiling stuff, uh, various managers for those controllers, so motion controllers, game pads, um, and effects. So there's a series of effects, including a book and, you know, like scramblers, which do puzzles. So you could have a puzzle. It would be like really, really easy to get a puzzle in here. Uh, that's, can you imagine that? that? That'll just be so much fun to have, have that kind of stuff in there. Shall we look at a scrambler just to see it? Here's... Here's a scrambler, so pick that up and move it along. And hopefully that scrambler will pop into the panel and you'll be able to just scramble that up. Here's like a scrambler that is scrambling letters. It also knows when you're done. And we make all sorts of art on there. Uh, we, we make art and we chop it up and sold NFTs that were like that. Fantastic. 
Okay, so that's a little bit about that. And we got to the slider. You could wire these things together. That looks really cool too. So you could just wire the slider to the circle and change the scale based on that wiring. Here's our made width, which is showing up in the bottom right. Oh yeah, there's the made width right there. And a color picker where we're specifying uh, specific colors. If we didn't, it might look like this. Oh, this could look awkward, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because we rotate it. <laughs> okay, there's a rotated color picker. Oh my God, uh, which we don't really want. I, I haven't tested the complex color picker. That's tricky. I wonder if it will work because it uses a canvas, I think, to pick as well. Um, where's the rotation? There's the rotation. So I'll take that out and let's see should we should we check i don't know this has all sorts of stuff in it to pick a color and look at my special custom cursor is hiding the normal cursor oh i don't even want to look we're you know like an hour and a half in <laughs> and then we'll get a bug oh i don't know what do you guys think i really don't want to look but let's look okay so there's the very that's about you know one of the most complicated things i can imagine in zim is that uh color picker there and there's the color picker yeah I, I lose the cursor I can pick a color but the the custom cursor on top gets lost however the the rest looks like it works I can move that can I collapse it yeah so that's good I can pick a cursor I can pick a color but I lose the um, the custom cursor is conflicted somehow with the custom cursor of the thing there all right, goodbye. Nice. Oh, what we should have checked is to see if it works when we spin it. Yeah, it all works. There's another format as well, which is sort of like a tile format. Yeah, but we lose the... Strife. Yeah, lose the cursor. What about the slider? The slider works. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, did the alpha on that? Oh, no. The, so the alpha, don't think, all oh, right. Yeah, we didn't apply the alpha. So the alpha has a, its own event on it, and I would have to um, apply that. We didn't hook up the OK. The OK does as well. So if I press OK, I can do something. I didn't add those events to the custom one here. Very cool. Close. Yeah. Coming back over here, uh, we were looking, uh, we want to comment, come back into this, we want to comment that stuff out, and set the color picker back to specific colors, yeah. and we're back to our, oh, hang on, it's not 3D, and there's our backing, okay. Oh, this has been a long one. Oh my god, it's an hour and a half. But once again, anytime you want, you can pause this and take a look at it later. Uh, hopefully the next part will go quicker because I'm getting like I want a drink of water or something like that. I can do it. And there's our frame that make icon on the back with a label and we're positioning all of that. So that just makes our back. Note that we've set the corner on those two so we can set the corner of those panels. And that comes in if we add to, once again, we'll just see what that is like over here. There's the little corner on them. And there, this one's not interactive. So let's see how we apply uh, these things. They don't even need to be added to the stage. That was just so that we could see them. Uh, some, some things need to be added to the stage. Like I said, uh, particle emitters need to be added to the stage. And it will say in the comments, add this to the stage to activate it. Gives it a little warning. Hey, you've got this emitter. It's not on the stage. So here we are coming in to the three JS side. Let's put this in here a little bit at a time. First of all, you don't have to do this. You don't have to bring in Zim's version of three. But what that does is it's saying, hey, let's make the scene, the camera, and the renderer. So that makes your basic scene, camera, and renderer. And in doing that, we have set the resize true. No, 
Did we need that? I don't think so. I don't think we need that there. That resizes the three JS thing. Okay, so let's take that off. Well, we won't be able to see it because it doesn't show us anything yet. All right, but we'll see that for later. Maybe I'll comment that out and we'll bring that back for later if we need it. Anyway, this is important. Interactive, true. If we want to use the orbit controls. So three, the three was set up to put 3JS into Zim. So it overlaid 3JS onto a Zim canvas and we would do Zim all in 2D, but we'd have this 3G op, 3D object that we could control with Zim. So that's what three was made for. And in doing so, it, we also abstracted just setting up the scene and the camera and the renderer and all that, and the ticker of the renderer or the request animation frame of the render. So all that is abstracted into here. You'll note that down in amongst here, uh, well, it's all commented out, but down in, and I opened it rather than closed it. So down in amongst here, there's a geometry, a material, and a mesh, and there's no, there's no uh, request animation frame in there. That's all been done. There's no setting up the render or the canvas or anything that needs to be set up. It's, it's already done for us. So that's what this guy is uh, right here. But you don't have to do that. We were doing earlier our earlier testings. You can use your own CreateJS, just however it's set up. And all you need to do is bring in Zim. And this, what, what you're seeing here will still work. Just so that we can access the scene, the camera, and the render without putting the, the three in front there. We've brought them into variables here. And here's the skybox. So our skybox is a picture. Uh, this is normal 3JS things. And here we go. Have a look. There's our, there's our skybox. Oh, it's not interactive though. Right. So up here. If we make the Zim stuff, this is Zim. If we make Zim interactive true, then you won't be able to use it. Zim, interactive true is, is default. So in other words, if we didn't have this here, by default, Zim is interactive, not 3JS. Oh, the other way around, sorry. Uh, interactive, it, it turns, uh, by default, interactive is false, and it means that 3JS will not be interactive. So 3JS is not interactive by default because then you wouldn't be able to interact with Zim. So we want to turn that to be true. And I'll turn texture active. Take that off for now to start. Uh-oh, what was that? There it is loading in, huh? Interesting. And I still can't interact with it. So what's going on? Set the resize to true. And see. Still doing the break there. Texture active true. So, uh, interesting. Still can't interact. And what do we have? Interactive false. Remember, we were talking about something's going on here. Oh, we don't have the orbit controls yet. Ah, for crying out loud. Okay, um, we don't have orbit controls yet. So, let's bring those in. I'm trying to interact and we haven't added the orbit controls. So interactive true. Let's leave these for now. It looks like Zim's loading first, then it's loading that all, all the texture in. So that's just a 3JS loading order. Zim's loading too fast. One thing that we did to help avoid that is when we run this thing, the fact that we've got texture atlas. So let's bring that back right here right there frame dot canvas dot display none so there we're hiding the canvas in other words if we have all this stuff uh, i didn't run it getting close there it is running so if we have that stuff running then uh there's nothing in behind there you see that gray that's just the background color i don't particularly like the way that scales in there where you, you see that I'm not sure why I'm seeing that now when I didn't see it before why would that be do you think sorry one sec let's comment all this stuff back out good and reduce it down should 
reduced it down first. So there's the orbit controls, the resize, true, maybe this will stop it from flashing. No, so we're still seeing the same thing. Yeah, that's weird, because I don't remember it flashing before to be that. Anyway, there's the orbit controls in there. I'm not sure what is causing the initial flash, but there's the orbit controls operating. Great. Then all this stuff we're going to move to Zim. So let's bring all the rest of the stuff back and see that. So obviously we wouldn't put this big class right here in your code. I mean, that will be moved to Zim, all that stuff. But we would want to make it. Textures dot on. That's showing you that you can actually, uh, once we, we do this, we're raycasting. And we'd be able to find out, for instance, when we press down on it, we would be able to see how far this is down. There's also move and up. But when we press down on it, we'd be able to see how far the thing that we're pressing on is. We'd also be able to see what things were, um, were animating. That was just sort of for testing, actually. Let me get rid of that. Need that. OK, but here's a geometry. This is a plane geometry with the width and the height. All right, so maybe that you might want to make smaller panels and that works as well. So we made a bunch of smaller panels and tested those and that works as well. So they don't all have to be the same size as the stage. You can have uh, 100 by 100 here or something. And then up above, when you make your panel here, you would put in 100, 100. Should we see what that looks like? That might be a little small. I'll call it 200, 200. All right. And depending on how we built the thing below, I don't know, it's going to look like a mess probably, but we can still do it. Down here. Did we say 200, 200? I think we did. All right, so there's the slider, there's the color picker, here's the circle, it's in the way, and there's the whole panel. Looks like, when I drag the circle, am I seeing the edge of it change? Oh, because the circle has a transparency, so we're seeing that through the corner of the panel. Uh, that's fine, that would be a masking issue if we wanted to, we could mask all that. But yeah, there it is all working. <laughs> it's a little, it doesn't fit, but uh, it's all working. And we didn't bring back the backing, it looks like. Okay, so don't want to do that, though. But that's a smaller panel. Um, that will also affect what you want to set here. So that's how far we've come back. We've pulled the Z back 1000. So let's save, let's save this and refresh here. That's still happening up there, up there in the corner. What the heck? That wasn't doing that before. What, what uh, are these things we need to bring back? Yeah, there we go. So something in there, which one was it? Resize, true. No, we don't need the resize. We need the texture active side of things. Otherwise, it's not um, not sure what goes into. So I'll have to look into 3JS and see if there's something in there that when we don't have it, it's in the middle. Ah, right, OK. So 3JS is in the middle. The Zim, uh, right, OK. So if you didn't have this, then all will work just fine. This, what it's doing is centering the 3JS. And if, you, if you're not setting this, it's not doing this anyway. I guess you would need to turn that on if you don't want the flash. But there it is. That's fine. Resize true, I guess we don't need. Let's have a look. No, so that's by default fine. 
but there is a case where you would use this. You're not wanting to resize because you're not resizing the 3JS or something like that. Anyway, there was one setting where we were testing to find out. Uh, oh, that's with the full mode. Yeah, so if you have a full mode of Zim right now, our, we're doing the fit mode and specifying uh, dimensions. But if you have full mode and you're not resizing, then you want to set this resize to uh, either true or false. I can't remember which one it was. Alrighty. Anyway, I'll leave that commented. Uh, we were looking through the 3JS stuff. There's the skybox. We saw that. There's our controls. Here's the texture active stuff. So we passed in, this will be in Zim, we passed in the menu, uh, not the backing, so I'll call my backing, the reference to the 3JS, because it might be some other uh, namespace, the reference to a Zim 3 if you're using it. Uh, and based on that, we, we do, it, it's not much, but when we do our examinings here, uh, that's a pointer up, pointer moves. There's a different way of grabbing the X and Y depending. So one is just using the client X, whereas, all right, so if we're not resizing, um, we just do use the start width and don't use the, the full width. Yeah, so that, that that's what that is anyway, but it's it's checking out some of that stuff from 3JS if, if we've got ours in there. All right, is that what I wanted to do? I don't think so. Oh, that's reduced, I want to reduce this one. Okay. And come all the way back up to the top here and reduce that. There's no way that we're going through the texture stuff. Did I even not look at the texture stuff yet? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I don't think we're doing two hours later. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. Okay. Whatever. I'm starting to lose it. Um, we were talking about our geometry and its width and height. Great. Here's where we pass in to the canvas texture. I'm not even sure if this is documented. Is it? I heard it was experimental. So learn documentation, search, canvas, texture. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, and we had to keep on updating the needs update. I should probably have a read. <laughs> I should probably have a read of this. I haven't actually seen the documentation for it. Anyway, there it is. Seems pretty straightforward. Aside from the wrapping might be of interest, how we wrap that. I don't know exactly what would happen if we tried to wrap the interface and operate on all the interfaces. Well, probably wouldn't work because we need a proportional mapping yeah I think so. and you don't want to stretch it either so that's one thing and perhaps we can go into the canvas now we don't want to have we, we want to let you do the canvas for the people using 3js to do the canvas texture right here rather than sort of say what needs to be done but anyway if you've got the same width and height as as what you're mapping onto then you're good. Otherwise, the ray casting would report the wrong X and Y to create JS. Okay, yeah, I don't think that that will be a problem. Yeah, there's the mapping. This is all normal. That's to get the transparency. Otherwise, you'll see black probably. And then we uh, mesh it. And this is optional, but if you don't do it, then make sure in here that you pass in null for that. Um, you probably won't need the near and far either. We just did that in there to check. So in the end, we're passing in the render as well, the scene, the camera, and the controls. 3JS doesn't really sort of report each other around, so the scene doesn't have a render property. 
and that's fine, but that means it, it's not easy to do things like this. We could have just passed in the scene. Like, actually, if we knew we were using 3JS, 3 has access to a render scene, camera, all that is stored on 3. So it would have made it easier if we forced people to use our stuff, we would have gotten rid of uh, everything but the controls, I think. All right, it would have been shorter. And and if we were using our stuff, we wouldn't even put it in there. And we'd probably assume the threes and it'd end up being something like that. Hey, here's the, you know, pass in what you want to be a texture, pass in the controls. The reason we pass in the controls is we have to turn the controls off if we're pressing on the stuff. And so that's why the controls are there. So that would have been easier if we knew that we were using all of our stuff, but we wanted to make it so that it worked without and therefore, we're relying on those things to be passed in. The Raycaster uses the scene and the camera. The render is, why do we use the render? Not sure why we use the render. Let's have a look. Render, spell right, Ren, render, render, er, Christ, register. Uh, no, I, I still didn't spell it right. Renderer. There we go. Uh, remote pointers. Add remote pointers. The renders DOM element. Hmm. We're going to be using it just to get the DOM element. Yeah, it looks like it. So here we are inside here. We're um passing our stage into the remote pointers of CreateJS. And that, uh, to go full circle back to where we were right at the very beginning of talking, that's going to take the raycasted data. And you know what? We haven't even looked at this, have we? We haven't even looked to see how the raycaster is doing all the stuff with the mouses. And <laughs> Do you guys want to go get a cookie? Let's see, I'm, I'm looking over here on my other side to see if I can find... Uh, it has been one hour and 46 minutes. I totally want to get a cookie. It's almost lunchtime. And we haven't looked into the renderer stuff, have we? Mm, that's kind of where the bulk of the under the hood is. Holy moly. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think I can put you through that. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe we should come back for a second under the hood. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if I can put myself through it. So we just got into into this uh, to find out what we were using the render for. I might actually change that if it's just the DOM element. We can probably, where else can we get the DOM element from? Nowhere. Yeah, see that's the thing. The scene doesn't hold the DOM element. It's not on the mesh. When we build in in Zim, if we make an object, that object has a stage property that represents the stage it's on. Uh, so it's sort of backwards, like to its parent kind of thing. But that happens less in 3JS. So uh, hence, we're you know, passing in four or five things there. Um, anyway, why don't we leave it at that? That was a Zim... <laughs> Which one? Under the hood. That was a Zim under the hood video. And we got everywhere except actually looking in the sort of the most complicated class. But we talked about all the other uh, mappings of this. And we will do an under the hood too that brings us right in to that texture actives. So look forward to that. I am Dr. Abstract. And this has been an under the hood. Right. Have a great day or night. Come join us at zimjs.com, zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack. Yeah. Cheers.